welcome to day two of the Rec Cup. It's great to have you with us here on the Hawks Sports Network. It's time to get this show on the road as we await game one on the second day of action here. We're going to be getting the Lakehead University squad taking on the St. Lawrence Surge. With you for today's broadcast is myself, Matt Hamill, and my broadcast partner, Zach Benoit. Zach, could you give us a little bit of a recap on the action you saw on day one yesterday? Yeah, it was an action-packed day one, and really from the jump, it was just all-go action with Lakehead University taking on McMaster here early on on rink number one. Now, Lakehead did end up falling in that one in a shootout 2-0, but the story of the game was really their goaltender, Tyler Jackman, who was phenomenal between the pipes. In the shootout, it, you know, a couple got away from him. But another thing to monitor with Jackman was, early in that third period, partner, he went down for a save and it looked like he might have pulled his groin. He was visibly in pain for the rest of that period. So it's definitely something to monitor because we saw yesterday how good he was on the ice. And for the St. Lawrence squad, they're playing over on rink two, had a little bit of a tough start to go and they're trying to build themselves up here and get on the right side of the win column. Well, we'll see uh, this game almost underway. Just a few minutes left here, and teams now heading to the bench, getting ready for this party to get started. Now the St. Lawrence Surge are wearing the red jerseys today and in the white, gold, and blue sweaters. I mean, Lake Head Aurelia Thunder Wolves. And we had to set the tone here, so we got Sandstorm playing to really get the energy up here on this rink. And it's, you know, Zach, a couple folks yawning. It's the 8 a in the morning game, so getting the party started here bright and early and should have a energetic first game. Now, these two teams were in action yesterday. We saw the McMaster team with that 1-2 shootout loss, and St. Lawrence had a shootout loss of their own as they dropped a 4-3 game to Ontario Tech. St. Lawrence also losing to Georgian in a 2-0 finish there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see really what team kind of jumps out and goes after the early lead here. Again, uh, the thing to monitor, and he's not starting today, looks like he's gonna be on the bench, was Tyler Jackman. He was such a factor for them in yesterday's game, and if you wanna look down, run through some of the, you know, the forwards and defense, a player that really caught my eye was the lone goal scorer in regulation, Jacob Dewey, number 58. He had a sensational game defensively. He got the tip in late, and he's definitely somebody to keep an eye on. Another guy that was, that was touching the puck a lot was 71, Aiden Dooley, who looked very strong throughout the entirety of the game. But, partner, I'm just excited. Day number two, day one brought us so much action. We had game one, which, which was a goaltender's duel. Game two between the Humberhawks women's team and... The Fanshawe Falcons was just a back and forth affair. And then you looked at the third game, Humber Hawks men, they just ran up the score. So curious to see what we're going to get here, but very excited to see it get underway. It's almost that time. We're all good to go. 10 minute first period, moments away from puck drop. The 2024 Rec Cup hosted by Humber College will be decided today. Opening puck drop, one by Lakehead Aurelia as the Thunderwolves will try to sauce it up into the neutral zone here and quickly interrupted by St. Lawrence, but now fired into the surge zone. St. Lawrence trying to clear it, kept in at the point, an early shot attempt. Solid save there by the surge netminder. And we saw early on in the last game with Lakehead, they, start, they started the game very slow on, on the defensive front. This game, it seems like they're having a little bit more of that urgency. They got the slow start against McMaster, now pick things up a little bit. Like that was Noah Sands who absolutely roofed that puck into the stanchion here at Westwood Arena. So that has our opening whistle of the game. The neutral zone faceoff ends up on the stick of the surge. We're now bursting in looking for their first shot of the game. Taken away by the defense of the Thunderwolves. Neutral zone play chipped back into the Thunderwolves zone. And the surge looking for a break into the end. Puck a little out of reach. 
Picked pocketed now behind the net and the Thunderwolves doing a good job Jack to just get control and break out of the zone. Yeah and we'll kind of see it again them try to build the attack and what's going to be interesting to watch throughout the entirety of this one is who controls the neutral zone. Yesterday it was McMaster really dictating the pace of the game against the Thunderwolves. So it's nice to see them early on right here just kind of attacking into the offensive half. Well, the whistle blow will have a face off in the St. Lawrence zone just to the left of the netminder here. Teams yeah. going for a line change a minute and a half into the game. I'm just going to say in net here is number one, Jonathan Forbes for the side of the surge. And I believe on the other side, it's Ian Crane starting in net. Play down low, and that's going to be right back in front of Forbes, who makes another save and another offensive zone faceoff for the Thunderwolves on the way. Yeah, another good positioning right there by Forbes. He had vision of the puck the whole way through. Possible Op opportunity here. Yeah, a little bit of speed breaking out of the zone, but then ultimately will be chipped away. Thought maybe he had a break opportunity for the search. And it whipped around the other side here as the Lake Caterillia team looks like they have some space to work with right now. Passing lane shut down. Loose puck. Moving across center ice now are St. Lawrence. They're going to chip it in. See if either team can get that offensive momentum humming early in the game. Bit of space, but that puck just out of reach. And now charge it into the zone here. Some good foot speed with the defender of the St. Lawrence Surge, Cole Jelly, making his way in. Nice pass here. Lots of room to work with. That pass tipped up high. Second whack at it. Steers clear. The Thunderwolves with all kinds of time to work with right now. So a little threatening opportunity there, Zach, on that rush. Yeah, very close. They had, they've had good efforts, but you look the other way here, the surger, they're having good opportunities too. Great shot at the net. Almost a goal right there. Yeah, wow, what an opportunity on the other side. Quick transition. Bodies flying everywhere right now. And that puck chipped out and right back into the Thunderwolves zone behind the net. Early stages, we've seen the Thunderwolves kind of have these, these short bursts of attack, but it's really been the surge that have kind of been dictating and controlling the neutral zone. You see it again right here, just intercepting everything. And we'll have our first penalty of the game on the way. Delayed penalty, the St. Lawrence netminder leaves his crease, and that's going to be the whistle that will set the St. Lawrence surge up for the first power play of this game. But let's take a look at a dangerous sequence here as St. Lawrence had a wonderful opportunity. And they might have a few more opportunities, Zach, as they now head with the man advantage. Yeah, that was Nelson Gregg right there, number 20, that just cut towards the net. He got a good shot off, but it just kind of tailed a little bit too far to the left there. Almost a 1-0 game. Thunderwolves clearing it down. A first period power play for St. Lawrence. Giddy up into the zone now. Wheeling around behind the net. Now at the point here. Chip back. Good carry by Nathan Merritt. Now the one-timer fanned on. Recovering. Shot on net. That's wide. The penalty against the Thunderwolves is for cross-checking. A minute and 10 seconds left on the power play. So far, not much in the way of chances. And now the Thunderwolves breaking it out of the zone. And maybe a shorthanded break here. And that shot off the side of the net. That break led by Aiden Dooley, who had himself a great game yesterday. We got 55 remaining here on the power play. Great shot. Yeah, that was a good wrister right on the goaltender. And a whistle blown is stoppage in play. And that leaves 51 seconds on the man advantage. Now, Zach, not too much in the way of scoring opportunities, but certainly some space to work with some good offensive zone control. Yeah, and early on, we're seeing, again, the surge. They're having a lot of opportunities right now in the offensive half. 
They had Crane absolutely fool on the screen shot. Wow, look at that, almost with the second chance as that puck deflected off the boards. And a good opportunity for St. Lawrence, not capitalized on, just 30 seconds remain on the power play. Good burst of speed up the middle and into the zone. St. Lawrence looping around. Keenan Bertrand, the one leading that charge in for the team in red. Shot wide, played back down low. Slapper, well wide and handled by the Thunderwolves defense. And out of the zone as we are now back to full strength. Still a scoreless hockey game over halfway into the first period. That's a great sign for the side of Lakehead. You break that power, that penalty right there. Don't give up any really good opportunities. Chance now, burst of speed, crashing into the crease, but no goal that time. But Zach, that was a good display of foot speed by number 34, Kyle Fitzmorris. And here comes Fitzmorris once more into the zone, showing off that speed. Looping behind the net, wraparound attempt. Not gonna go, but it looked dangerous. Yeah, you can hear it ring a little bit off that iron. Puck stopped up at the blue line. St. Lawrence just continues with their attacks. Moving in, Rister blocked by the defender. Ever since that power play, Zach, you really feel that momentum for St. Lawrence. A lot of drives towards the net right now. So far, none of them have found the back of the net, but some good early game energy. Fitzmorris, another opportunity. Good wrist shot from way back. Yeah, and again, the big story yesterday was Lakehead's defense, and that's what they're showing again early on here in this first period. The Lakehead are really a Thunderwolves. Coughing it up. Two on two rush now. Looping behind a golden opportunity, and the opening goal of the game is scored by the St. Lawrence Surge, and it was just a beautiful setup for Justin Pulis, who buries it for a 1 0 game. And they break the scoreless tie, but really, you kind of felt like that it was coming anytime soon, and Pulis was the one to break it open. A great setup here. He had the goalie completely caught off guard. And you see Crane leaves the five hole open and he goes right underneath that pad. He gives us the one nothing lead here for the surge. Well, it was that two on two rush and then the extra man coming into the zone for St. Lawrence just not picked up by the Thunderwolves defenders. And that one is buried and right back onto the St. Lawrence side of things here as they bring it into the zone. And across the neutral zone as the Thunderwolves look for a response. Good defending there to block that shooting lane. And flipped up high and clear. In through the neutral zone, trying to penetrate that surge zone, but boy, they're just doing a great job of stuffing all these Thunderwolves attacks. And Zach, one thing I'm noticing too with the St. Lawrence team is their transition play. They're able to take that puck away and just get that burst into the other team's zone. Yeah, again, and it all comes from that neutral zone presence. When you're able to just kind of intercept the passes as well as the St. Lawrence surge are doing right now, Lakehead, every time they're getting any attack out, it's almost being shut down instantaneously, and Surge is just, again, that like you said, that transition to offense has been so clean for the boys in red. Well, with the faceoff coming in the St. Lawrence zone, there's maybe a chance for the Thunderwolves to get some offensive momentum going, but that puck drop quickly won away. And here comes the team in red. Another rush. Broken up, and this could be good for the Thunderwolves now as they'll elect to clear it in. Unable to retrieve that puck as St. Lawrence, all kinds of space to work with now, clearing out. Back in now. 
a kind of a no-look shot there, and that's saved. As we enter the final minute of play in period number one, a one-nothing lead for the St. Lawrence Surge. Yeah, that no-look shot from uh, number 15, Keenan Bertrand. I mean, hey, why not pull out the bag of tricks here in the Rec Cup? I like it. A little Patrick Mahomes style, the no-look. And that was a long stretch pass. A lot of heat on it, just out of reach. That could have been a good opportunity. For St. Lawrence number 34, who Zach Kyle Fitzmorris has really been turning on the Jets. And you get a sense that this surge team, after dropping two games yesterday, are excited to maybe put together a winning effort here in the opening game of day two. Quick snapshot from the point there. And yeah, you know, going 0-2 yesterday, coming into the early morning game here, you know, try to have a good day. And I think that's the key thing if you're the side of St. Lawrence. Yeah, like you said, that was a good opportunity just a moment ago. As final 10 seconds of the period, do we have any action? Can St. Lawrence in the zone here? Get one more effort on net, two seconds, tick away. And no, we will not get another shot. So one nothing is the score after one period of play. Zach, I think that effort we saw is in large part just the momentum from that power play. I really think put the exclamation mark on that first period. Yeah, and I was I was gonna say at the end of that period, the you know, Lake had had that opportunity. You see here the big saves coming out of Crane early on. But I was gonna mention the the late opportunity that Lake, that Lake had had. It was a great shot to possibly tie things up. They got a good shot off. Just couldn't beat Forbes in the net. And you see there the goal by Fitzmorris on Crane. And it'll be interesting to see how Lake had responds here in the second period, because again. It seemed for the majority of those 10 minutes, the surge were just having their way. It was the neutral zone battle that we were witnessing, the transition yeah. to offense. And now if you're the side of Lakehead, what are you going to do to clean things up here in the second period and generate yourself some more good scoring opportunities? We saw a couple. And again, it was led by Aiden Dooley, number 71. So the teams switch sides in period number two is underway. 10-minute periods we're playing here at the 2024 Rec Cup. Saw a couple games decided in shootout yesterday. Will we see a close one here that potentially needs an extra frame? Drop pass. Almost intercepted, but the Surge are able to break it out here. Courtesy of Justin Pulis's pass. Yeah, we were treated just such phenomenal games yesterday, and that shootout between Lakehead and McMaster was just so master class. Pinch here to keep it in by Jacob Dewey. Moved in, that puck will whistle around the net and now it's a break into the zone. St. Lawrence moving in, it's gonna be icing though as Pulis just could not get that puck under control. Again, uh, another good early opportunity here in the second period for the side of Lakehead, you know, they've had a couple of these opportunities afterwards, uh, you know, after a couple of these icings, and it'll be interesting to see if they set up Dewey. He was the lone goal scorer a lot yesterday. And here they come as that puck just kind of staying at the blue line right now, and now into the zone for the Thunderwolves. St. Lawrence looking to keep that offensive momentum going, a quick tip. Off the mark that time. And they're working it around here really well. A lot of pressure being put on by the surge. Almost tripped up behind the net, but a good job to stay on his feet is Keenan Bertrand. Player we highlighted a few times in period number one. That good no-look shot from Bertrand. Stepping in here is Elijah Wilson. Puck right on the tape of the defense and cleared out of the zone as the surge go for a change. Here we go. Good pass in towards the middle. That shot in the skates and steered wide. The surge crossing the blue line here. Looping behind the net. The quick shot in front of the net is steered aside. 
And that opportunity by Lakehead, that was Noah Sands. And this line of Noah Sands and Dooley has really been strong in the past game and a half here for the Lakehead. So I wonder if they'll possibly get some more ice time, try to generate more offense. Had a man open in front of the net, but just could not get that pass through as the Thunderwolves are looking for the equalizer. Down one nothing right now after a first period goal about halfway through that opening period by St. Lawrence. And another puck flipped high, hitting the ceiling, and we'll have a whistle coming up. And that's one thing about this barn here. You know, you look at the ceiling, it's pretty low hanging. So if you're going to clear the puck, you can't have those high arcing shots. You just kind of got to laser it down. It's definitely something to keep an eye on for the rest of the games here, for the rest of this rec cup. So a offensive zone faceoff is not able to be corralled by St. Lawrence. Pinching defender pays off as the search. Keep it in. Behind the net now. That puck chopped away. Thunderwolves trying to break out of their zone, but the surge had other ideas. Quick shot on net and a nice glove save with another faceoff coming up in the Thunderwolves end. And that's big for Ian Crane to get that first save, big save, I should say, of the period right there for that young man. You know, he's getting a, pressured a lot in that first period. He was caught out of position that one time, but really since then he's settled down. He's looking a lot calmer in the net right now. Face off back, and here come the Lakehead Aurelia team. And that's right in the chest of the goaltender. So a couple uh, whistles in quick succession here. Now, can the Thunderwolves uh, corral one of these offensive zone faceoffs and just have not really seen them able to get that offense firing here? You have the right player on the blue line here, number 58. The Thunderwolves uh, only scoring one goal in their opening game yesterday in that shootout loss to McMaster. Kept in and with some bodies. Beautiful move there to create some space and even prettier pass. And the Thunderwolves finish off the play at last pass there, kind of in the wrong direction. But what an effort that time. I think that was number 23, Ryan Graff. Yeah, he had himself a really good game yesterday on the defensive end and especially on just setting up his teammates. We saw it right there. He just demonstrates great hands. That's gorgeous. The deke and then the nifty pass as the surge looking to answer. Charging back in. Good puck bounce here, and that pass just out of reach. Looked like maybe the Thunderwolves had the advantage there. They were trying to springboard Noah Collins, who has the puck right now. Losing the handle on the puck is Tyler Bendo. And a shot high, glove down. Face off coming up in the Thunderwolves zone. And just another good save right there coming out of Crane. Again, I, I'll always preach the praise for goaltenders, partner. I've never got to play hockey, but if I did, I would have been a goaltender. Oh, I did some uh, goaltending in my road hockey days. But, Zach, I took a late November frozen road hockey ball into the bridge of the nose when I was about 12 years old, and that sucker broke. And that was the end of my uh, road hockey goaltending days. Mine the was. end of a dream, Zach. <laughs> Mine was the elementary school ball hockey in the gym. <laughs> oh, nice move there in front by the Lakehead. Still in control here are the Thunderwolves. Brawled around right there was Jonathan Forbes. He was just caught on an awkward spot, but the Lakehead Thunderwolves just unable to capitalize. Taken away here. Breakaway opportunity. The surge in. Going for the between the legs move. How do you do? Maybe we'll get a replay on that attempt as the high skill play doesn't quite pan out for the surge that time. Over halfway into the second period, our score remains 1-0 after a first period goal, courtesy of the team in red. The surge have been dominant throughout this. Like another opportunity here. Yeah, that was a beautiful chance here, and the save is made. The puck's still loose. Now gloved down 
And to keep it from being a 2-0 game, the Thunderwolves having to rely on some solid goaltending on that play. Yeah, Ian Crane. Take a look at this. This is the between the legs that you were talking about. Tried to get it, just slipped off the stick a little bit too early. And then this was there's another angle of it right there. Just popped off the stick a little bit early. And then this was the opportunity. Great save by Crane. Again, he's just settled down so much here in the second period. So just continuing to see that disparity in terms of a lot of chances for St. Lawrence. Not as many for the Thunderwolves. What a save by the goaltender that time. Highlight reel Crane is at it right now. Yep. And here come the surge, quick shot, and another solid save by Crane. Another look at it right here, and Crane just loses an edge, and somehow is able to make that save. Look at this. He looked like he went out for it and just fell down, thought the puck was caught underneath him, but... It popped out loose, and Surge could not capitalize on it. I was going to mention saying that hey, Lakehead. Sometimes you got to lay down like the mummy to kind of keep that puck out of the net, and exactly. it worked that time. I was going to mention that Lakehead, you know, it seemed in a certain stage of the second period, they started to get more offensive looks. They started to win yep. those neutral zone battles. But then the last about two, three minutes, again, it has just, it's just all been Surge. Well, you're going to see those momentum swings, and yeah, there was that window of opportunity for the Thunderwolves, but now it's the Surge who are kind of back on top. Have been in that dominant position for the Lions' share of this game. So just over three minutes to go here. The faceoff is going to be in the surge zone. Won by Lakehead. And a quick shot. Well, he blocked. Good defensive play by St. Lawrence. Right on the mix there was Nathan Merritt. And how about this? Here come the surge. An opportunity. Moving in and backhand is saved by that left pad. Great left pad saved by Crane. And I'm not sure if you saw part of Keenan Bertrand. He took a that he took that block shot right off the hand. He was shaking it out a little bit. Rister handled by the crane. Behind the net now and breaking out of the zone. Aiden Dooley trying to break out, but the pass too hot as Lakehead handed back over to St. Lawrence. And the surge bursting in. Look out. Thought maybe they were going for the wraparound, but the quick shot attempt Trying to catch Crane off guard. And a cross check will be called now against St. Lawrence. So, Zach, that's going to be going against number 25, Nathan Merritt. And yeah. we saw what the power play. Sorry, go ahead, Zach. No, I was just saying, that is, Merritt was also the one that tried that wraparound, but he yep. cut back, yep. lost an edge, and ultimately goes to the box. Maybe some frustration building from that play that led him to land the cross check. I saw it with my own eyes. I think it's a solid call by the official. And two minutes of the advantage for the Thunderwolves. Zach, this could be a, such a pivotal moment to help turn the momentum here and get some offensive juju going. That puck is loose. And a cheeky play poking at it as the St. Lawrence players take exception. And some extracurriculars taken off. And you have the right players on the ice. You see a great pass by Beck down low trying to get it to Graft, but he got the tip, but just couldn't get it underneath that pad. It was a good job by Forbes to snap the pad down on the ice. Yeah, St. Lawrence not liking the extra poke at the end of that play. And, you know, Zach, I think we can all get a little cranky at 8 in the morning. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame him. Trying to set things up. Good pressure here by the defense of St. Lawrence. Looking for a shooting lane. There it is, and a beautiful goal. Roofing it in that top right corner. 
And how about that to even up the game on the power play, our first power play goal of the game. It did not take Lakehead really at Thunder Wolves long, and what a shot by Aiden Dooley. Yeah, and I've been saying his name. He was a player definitely to watch yesterday, but look at this. Dooley, what a great just snapshot to that top left corner. Wasn't sure if it caught off the jersey of his teammate. I believe it just went cleanly in, but again, nonetheless, way to tie it up right there if you are the Lakehead Thunderwolves. A big momentum shift possibly coming here. So a costly penalty against the surge, allowing the team in white to get back into this game, a 1-1 tie. <laughs> And we'll see if the surge can kind of get back in the driver's seat right now because what a momentum play on that power play. And a shot from the point is swallowed up. Yeah, and you mentioned it on that penalty kill. Surge, we're getting very aggressive, you know, kind of caught out of position a little bit, and that's what it can lead to. You have the extra attacker if you're Lakehead, and you have a lot of open ice to work with, and especially if the surge are being that aggressive, you're going to have a lane to shoot. So less than a minute to go here in this second period as this game a whole new complexion with that tying goal. Turnover in the Thunder Wolves zone. A quick shot by St. Lawrence steered wide. Now looping around is Evan Jamison. Not able to get anything going. Breaking out of the zone now. Noah Collins hands it off. Collins back applying some pressure. Flipped up high and a gorgeous scoop pass here and that's going to really set up the surge. Good shot, better save. Into the middle now, a wide open man and that shot up high and saved. Wow, Zach, a flurry of chances there for the surge. And again, just great job by Crane in the net. You talked about it. Good shot, but a better save. Just going from post to post, sliding around there and a nice job. The Agile, number one. Face off up high into the net. If this was the NHL, that'd be a two minute penalty. This is better than the NHL, this is the OCR. Let's go, the Rec Cup. Great atmosphere. Only 2.7 seconds on the clock, Zach, and the official arena clock. So not a lot of time to work with. And that will be the end of our second period. A little collision for good measure at the end. And 1-1 one, one is our game. So it was the surge scoring in the opening period, but a power play goal in the second allows the Lakehead Aurelia Thunderwolves to tie it up. And really, Lakehead, throughout that period, it was nice to see It was really nice to see Lakehead just, you know, get some more momentum in that second period. It eventually led to them scoring. And really, again, it, their goaltending is what's been shining so far today. You look at Ian Crane and what he's been able to do. And then yesterday, obviously, they had Jackman in between the pipes. But back-to-back -back days of good goaltending out of Lakehead. Well then, our brief intermission has now come to a close. The official blows the whistle. It's time to get our third period underway. Zach, we've seen some strong play in that second period from the Thunderwolves goaltender, Ian Crane, and I think a big reason why this game is the way it is right now, and Lakehead is still in it because, I'll tell you what, some of those chances for St. Lawrence, they could have popped in maybe another two in that second period easily. And we could easily have a 3-0 or 3-1 game instead of a 1-1 game. Again, good goaltending just goes a long way. And Ian Crane to, right now is showing why for the side of Lakehead. Hey, if you see a goaltender today, give him a hug. Exactly. Face off in the Thunderwolves zone. And they're able to win it back. 
Looking for some space on the breakout and take a shot every time somebody hits the ceiling. A shot of coffee. A shot of. Or an espresso. You got it. You know where I was going with exactly. that. Exactly. Early morning. I mean, it's it's five o'clock somewhere. Maybe on the other side of the world, but it's five o'clock somewhere. O'clock. Yeah, maybe somewhere in Thailand, perhaps. Maybe Australia. You. Here come the Thunderwolves. Beautiful play here inside. That shot down low. Strong save. But that was a good solo effort that time by Jacob Dewey. Passed out onto that wing. Lots of time to work with here. Shot up high. Saw a little bit of daylight there. Not able to find the back of the net. Tipped around in front right there by the surge. Almost dangerous for Crane, but he's holding his own. St. Lawrence have certainly had more chances than their opponent in this game, but at this point, both teams have only converted one goal apiece, so we're all tied up. Doesn't very matter how many strong chances you get if you can't convert. Yeah, there was a very good opportunity there by Aiden Dooley. A lot of pressure being put on by that young man. And an icing call will bring the puck all the way back. One by St. Lawrence. The surge playing it back. Handled here by James Rogers. Rogers helping to break it out of the zone. Clearing it into the Thunderwolves zone, and they'll quickly chip it up. Bit of a puck race for the puck right now. Big rush here, lots of speed. Kyle Fitzmorris tried to make a play on it down low. Puck swings around on the boards here. Kept in at the blue line. Not now as it's broken out. Good control here by St. Lawrence. Will we have another tied game at the end of regulation and need the extra frame? We'll find out, but right now we're all locked up at one, Zach. Yeah, and the rules here in OCR and at the Rec Cup, there's no overtime, partner. You just go straight to that shootout. Now, for I might have to check our uh, handbook here, but I believe for our championship games, there may be a non-shootout overtime, a brief overtime frame, but... Let me, uh, let me check my sources on that one. And then, yeah, you just, the extra time rule coming through and again, the shootout partner. There's an opportunity here for Lakehead, nice snapshot, but can't find back the net. Another good save by Forbes. But the shootout, if you didn't see it yesterday, both teams, they'll be shooting at the same Simultaneous. time. Simultaneous. Take the most exciting play in hockey and multiply it by two. That's what. Basically. And here we go as the St. Lawrence team takes a quick shot. That was up high. Shot taken by Evan Jameson. And the surge trying to hang on to the puck. Cough it up for a moment here, but scary as that. Trickles right in front of Crane, who has to make the save. Will Crane be tested again on this drive? St. Lawrence with control. Now moving inside. The backhand is stopped. Crane's holding his own right now, and that's what you want to see if you're the side of Lakehead. Their defense, again, through two games, has been the strongest point of their game. But you got 549 remaining here in regulation. How are you going to respond? Because you went to the shootout yesterday. And it didn't go your way, dropping it 2-0. So, Zach, just to confirm, yes, the championship games for the men and women's side of the tournament will involve a five-minute overtime frame. And if that is not sufficient, we go back to the double shootout. 
Why not go back to the most electrifying moment of the game? Sports entertainment. And just, and yeah, exactly. And just, and just multiply it by two. Face off. Up for grabs right now. It's a race for it here. Puck up high in the air. Glove down. And look out. The goal scorer for the Lakehead team with a good blast down low. Right back the other way. The surge come back with a chance. Play in the middle. Through the neutral zone now. Thunderwolves in the zone. Low shot, steer to side. And cleared out all the way down. No icing though. That's right on net. And is Crane going to go for the big pass? It's actually almost picked off. Dangerous play there. And instead of a breakout for the Thunderwolves, they're back trying to defend the play. Now a chance to break out. That was Elijah Wilson almost stealing it away and getting that goal chance. Can the Thunderwolves find the go-ahead goal on this drive? No, they cannot as it's taken down the ice by Fitzmorris. And Fitzmorris sends it right into the breadbasket. Four and a half minutes to go here in regulation. Well, Zach, I'm interested to hear. You were here on day one, and I'm curious on how a commentator is meant to commentate on simultaneous shootouts. Again, this is if we go to overtime, and I'm excited to find out. <laughs> You'll watch the left side. I'll watch the right. <laughs> yeah, it might just be a good old-fashioned chaotic situation exactly so we will have a winner at the end of the day heavy collision right there between the two players in the back yeah taking a little extra time to get up is bobby monroe and there's monroe back on his feet now as he plays it across to his point partner into the middle good exhibition of passing there by lakehead but the play is just a little bit ahead for the offside and how else would you want to start your Thursday morning with a great hockey game like this? I mean, these two teams are leaving it all out on the ice. You know, the surge. They want to get capture that first win at the Rec Cup. And Lakehead, they're trying to answer back after the close game yesterday. Good movement here by St. Lawrence as they're in. That's a good heavy shot up high. Good save by Crane. And the puck out of the zone for the time being. St. Lawrence kind of leaning on their opponent right now and charging back in. Another shot steered up high by Crane. And he's having himself a really good game, definitely being tested throughout these last two periods. Whipped around. Puck taken by the Thunderwolves. Jack Beck moving in, gets the shot off. Saved by Jonathan Forbes. Yeah, the line of Beck, Graft, and Dooley has just been so electric for this Lakehead University team. Drop pass there, a little off angle, but still a great rush inside. And we're going to have a penalty call there. It's all kinds of stuff. We have a surge player crash into the net. But at the end of the day, Zach, will have the penalty against the Thunderwolves. Now the Surge were not able to capitalize on their power play earlier in the game in the first period, but it did really spark a certain, I don't know what, a je ne sais quoi, the team that really allowed them to get in the driver's seat. So I think we're going to have a little timeout action right now, Zach. But let's see, we had a couple of collisions on this play. Yeah, it looked like a modified hip check <laughs> was coming out of the way of Christian Taylor, number 17 on the, on the Lakehead University squad. So he'll go to the box for two. And Crane got crashed in, I believe, by the captain on the side of the St. Lawrence Surge. I believe it's number eight that's wearing the captaincy. And you know, he's got a time, quick timeout refresher. There is, like you said, there is going to be a two-minute power play here with 2.50 left. So we'll have 50 seconds left of even strength, and that should prove to be pretty eventful to see the how this one ends. Because, again, you're the side of Lakehead. 
you know, it might be looming in the back of your head how yesterday's game actually ended. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, maybe do they bounce back in a way. Quickly sauce down the ice to chew up some clock. And this is going to be tough for the Thunder Wolves team facing some adversity. Late in the game, down a man for almost the remainder of this game. There'll be 50 seconds of even strength time if the Thunder Wolves are able to kill this penalty off. Two players got tangled up in the neutral zone. You can kind of see on the bench, the goaltender on the bench, Jackman, he raised his head and saying, that's a, that's a penalty. <laughs> well, maybe we might have had a chance for some five on three behind the net here. And still unable to get anything set up on this late game power play. Looking for the decisive goal, or will we need a shootout? The surge go for a line change, as do the Lakehead Aurelia Thunderwolves. Just a minute to go here on this power play in the surge. Oh, they are surging. Moving inside. Puck played up to the point now. Justin Pulis plays it across. Back to the point. Here's Justin inside. Great exhibition of passing there, but not able to come away with a shot on that. Again, the defense shining through here for Lakehead, and they're going to need it to shine through for 30 more seconds. Moving inside, yeah, you said about 32 seconds left on the power play. Good shooting lane to work with. And the pass is loose, and there it is, the late game goal on the power play. A minute 15 left in the third period, and the St. Lawrence surge take the lead. It just sneaks through, and you said it's the surge right there to clean it up. Evan Jamison is the one that comes away with the go-ahead goal. That just, just trickled through. Crane, you can see it right here. He thought he had between the pads. Jamison sees it in the back, and he just buries it home. Wow, how do you like that? So Lake had one for one on the power play, but then they give the surge a chance on the power play. And now after being unsuccessful on the first period man advantage, the surge get the tremendously important late game goal. We're going to have a timeout called by the Thunderwolves. Now the real question here, if you're Lakehead partner, if you get possession right away, are you pulling that goaltender ASAP or are you just going to leave him in and trust that five on five? Well, Zach, I think it's been tough for this Lakehead team to really beat the defense and get those opportunities. I think you need to switch things up. You can't just, you have a minute 15 to work with. I think you need to pull that goalie and go big or go home and try to flip the energy and see if that extra skater can really help you control the puck, get into the zone. And we will find out very, very soon. Again, this is a important moment in this game and you can see Lakehead, they have their top line out right now. Beck, Graft, and Dooley. And at the center ice dot, right away, won by Lakehead. And they're gonna keep their netminder. He is now out, so with an extra skater out, six on five hockey. Desperation setting in for the Thunderwolves. Lakehead not able to keep it in. That puck trickles out. 50 seconds remain. That pass chipped into the zone, but this will be cleared out, and now we're going to have to wait for that off uh, icing whistle. Thought for, bring the puck all the way back. Thought for a second that icing might not be called. You saw Jacob McGongill. He was going down the ice with some speed to try to cancel out that icing, but no, ultimately it still gets called. And if you're Lakehead, this is the best case scenario. You've got 37 seconds left to go, and they win the draw. That is a big miscue there, winning the draw a little too cleanly. And that puck is cleared all the way in. It is tipped, so no icing called. That's a big break for the Thunderwolves. And trickling out at the point. Oh, boy. Only 18 seconds to work with. No icing call. 10 seconds. This is going to have to be a direct drive towards the net. Any sort of resistance is going to be killer. And that will do it. 
A long shot to end the game, but 2-1 is our final. A late power play goal with just over a minute to go by St. Lawrence gives the surge the victory. And Zach, that's so tough. We were talking shootouts. Seemed like we might be going to overtime, but St. Lawrence had other ideas. Yeah, and again, that late penalty just oh, so tough if you're the side of Lakehead, really. But, you know, the surge, they capitalized. And you talked about it during that power play. Phenomenal passing amongst the players on the ice there for the surge. And Jamison was able to bury it. And that'll do it here. Well, the opening game of the Rec Cup here on Rink 1 has come to a close. We got more action for you here. Coming up, our next game on the Hawks Sports Network will be featuring a matchup between the Humber Hawks and the Fanshawe Falcons. We'll be right here to call that game. Don't go anywhere. Great to have you with us here on the Hawks Sports Network. The player of the game for the Lakehead Aurelia Thunderwolves is Aiden Dooley. Zach will hang on tight just for the player of the game for the St. Lawrence team. So Aiden Dooley, the player of the game. And for the St. Lawrence surge, number nine, Evan Jamison. He scored the game-winning goal. No surprise here, Zach. Yeah, no surprise at all. Jameson had a good game, and like you said, he got that capturing goal right at the end. Minute 12, to be exact. And the players get one picture together here, and again, that'll do it for game one, and game two coming up should be another good one.